I just, I always go for Luis Scott Vargas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's not a it's not an unsafe bet. Let's put it like that. As yes. we get things kicked off here with Crypt Breaker into either Fiend Artisan or Lazatep Reaver. Fiend Artisan uh, maybe not going to show up just yet, as we do have the we do have the potential to get to some card draw there with the Lazatep Reaver and the Amass Token. Yeah, so I get going. I think this is the ideal start for this God Pharaoh's gift deck. I was honestly pretty skeptical about the power level of this deck, and then I just played like six, seven matches with it, and I quickly realized how good this deck really is. It is so powerful when you can start by drawing two cards a turn as early as turn two. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful, and here we're going to see the Lazatev Reaver blocked. When this Dreadhorde Butcher dies, we'll be able to ping off the Crypt Breaker. In response, we'll see the three zombies tapped and draw a card, losing a life as well. So goodbye, Absolutely. little Crypt Breaker. You did your job, though. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, Matt Nass really recognizing that no matter what, that um, Dreadhorde Butcher was going to be sacrificed to the oven. Why take one additional damage? Because the Crypt Breaker is that important. Yeah, it's super important. Like uh, the desk mentioned earlier, just generating creatures on the battlefield or generating card advantage. It does a lot of work, as we'll see. The work now being taken over here by Priest of Forgotten Gods. But uh, here we see a cat and two ovens. So uh, let's just say LSB wins straight away because, you know, cat oven, how do you beat that? Cat oven is so, <laughs> so powerful. And you know what is not powerful? Matt Nass's draws here, not drawing uh -huh. a land off the Crypt Breaker or the two turns here. A little bit of bad luck. And I think, yeah, Matt is priced into activating a priest against a cat, which is not exactly where you want to be. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not the best thing ever, but you do get to cost a Ravenous Chupacabra if for some reason Luis Scott Vargas decides to cycle through all the, all the, uh, uh, the triggers now, which we won't see happen, but I don't imagine, we, do get, yeah. we do get to get two Fiend Artisans down, so that's not too shabby. Yeah, not bad, but once again, uh, land is what Matt and Ass really wanted to see here, because these Fiend Artisans are not exactly creatures you want to be sacrificing to the Priest, and we don't really have any more fodder for the Priest here. You know, another Lazatep Reaver off the top is probably the second best draw um, uh, next to a land, but you really need to be hitting your land drops uh, in this Mono Black God Pharaoh's gift deck. Yeah, the Priest of Forgotten Gods can only do so much. You really don't want to be chowing on your resources just to generate some mana. So, Collected Company is going to throw another spanner in the works here. Never mind. Oh. It's just a Dreadhorde Butcher. That's possibly, besides winning entirely, that's probably the worst thing that Luis could have found. Yeah, yeah. And Luis, uh, never lucky Scott Vargas here, <laughs> whiffing on that uh, Collected Company. At least that's got a, how he views himself whenever he whiffs on a Collected Company, I feel. Yeah. Hashtag never lucky. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. So what's the next play here for Matt Nass? Things are looking a little bit dicey, only having two lands in the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, at first glance, one of the obvious plays is just kind of get busy with uh, these Fiend Artisans. A cat can come back and chump one of them, uh, so you're not really getting through too much damage. And actually, with the Cauldron Familiar's ability, uh, you know, the multiple times this turn, we're actually accomplishing no damage but and then you just play another fiend artisan and hope that's good enough but maybe that's just not a winning line well he's deliberating over uh activating this priest of forgotten gods we're yeah. going for it sacrificing two fiend artisans we do get a massive fiend artisan after this though which is kind of neat yeah and chupacabra and most importantly, we're starting to get close to the gate of the afterlife being able to be activated and find that other God's Pharaoh's gift if oh, nice. Matt Nass could ever draw another land. Oh yes, but this is pretty good as we're able to be, we'll be able to cast the gate of the afterlife plus Stitcher Supplier and we might be able to just keep going here even with two lands. Exactly. And I mean, honestly, just playing Stitcher Supplier, getting Gates into play is extremely good against LSV before post board. We get Reclamation Sages that can come in, Veraska, a lot of good artifact hate that LSV mm -hmm. has in the board. But for game one, not too much uh, LSV can do about it except just keep throwing this cat into the oven. <laughs> Throwing the cat in the oven, making a whole bunch of kitty cakes, and uh, Im importantly, draining down Matt Nass's life total down to 13. He's going to go with this last activation off the food. Let's it hang out in the graveyard for now, though, as we find claim the firstborn off the top of the library. So, do we get this priest off the battlefield? 
I'm still stuck on the kitty cakes thing. That is the first time I've heard that. That is quite hilarious. <laughs> They're delicious. Look at them. Yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah, so interesting here. Getting priest is actually quite strong in the sense that, you know, you can activate it and sacrificing cauldron familiar is not that big of a cost. But that is upping the cards in the graveyard for Matt Nass. And I can't see exactly how many we have in there, but... Uh, Matt might already be able to activate Gate to the Afterlife. Yeah, and as soon as that happens, you got to think he's just going to keep pressing the advantage and uh, run away with this game, potentially. But mm -hmm. never discount this Jun deck. This deck can win out of nowhere as we're going to see this Kitty Cat cycle a few times. Midnight Reaper going to draw some cards, finds Collected Company off the top of the library. And, and I, uh, love, I love this combo here. I mean, Cauldron Familiar... Uh, Midnight Reaper, Witch's Oven, being able to draw a card, you don't lose that life because Cauldron Familiar is coming back. So it just generates so much card advantage every oh. single turn. Oh, this is gross. I love this. I'm going to steal stuff. I'm going to sacrifice my things. I'm going to draw a bunch of cards. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't really want to kill the Stitcher Supplier because of it being able to fill the graveyard. But at the same time, you know, Free cards. Woo! <laughs> exactly. And you know, nobody is going to say that Claim the Firstborn is the best card in Historic, but mm -hmm. look at the swings when Claim the Firstborn is cast. Just such huge tempo shifts in the game from so many different decks, right? From uh, Salvato's Red Black Arcanist deck, from these Jun Sacrifice lists. It is just such a powerful, dynamic card. Uh, and we're seeing it go to good use here as well. <laughs> yes, we are. So Gate to the Afterlife, giving them, or well, giving us another land there off the top of the library, finally, yeah. for Matt Nass. Also, just padding the life total a little bit every time something dies, but you've, you've got to think, like, yeah, we're, we're in a pretty good spot here now to get God Pharaoh's gift going. Yeah, exactly. And I do remember seeing a Massacre Worm uh, in mm -hmm. Matt Nass' graveyard, so bringing that back, being able to clean up um, some of these permanents here, even though if it's just going to be a Midnight Reaper, that is still um, the kind of play that Matt needs to get back into this game. And I don't even know if it's enough at this point. Well, time will tell as we now have the activation on Gates of the Afterlife. So he's eyeing out that. And here we go, the namesake of the deck. This is the reason you play this deck. It's not for Ravenous Chupacabra, it is for God Pharaoh's Gift. Mm-hmm. Ravenous Chupacabra is just the cherry on top, being able to get those creatures out and sacrifice or, yep. and uh, exiling them, creating 4-4s four and killing whatever comes back or ki killing whatever needs to be killed or dealt with on the battlefield. But you know what? We're going to go for the big old worm. Not as impressive as a 4-4, four four, but still it's going to kill that Midnight Reaper. And every time something on your opponent's side dies, they're going to take two damage. And that exactly. is pretty darn neat. Yeah, that's a super strong play here. Um, as long as Matt Nass can survive the next turn, it looks like we don't have too much going on. Something like a Mayhem Devil from Luis Scott Vargas' side with these two Witches Oven and Cauldron Familiar is probably just going to be lights out, so that's definitely what uh, LSB is hoping to hit off these Collected Companies. Time will tell. Let's see what Collector Company can find for LSV. Draws a swamp off the top of the library. It's Coco time. What do we find? Is it going to be better than the one Dreadhorde Butcher? Please, yes. Oh, it's well, the Butcher with better. friends. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Ewo Strider, how you doing? Wrong three drop for what LSV really wanted, and that's that Mayhem Devil, but of course, still a very, very good play here. Is indeed as we're now able to start sacrificing on permanence and uh, milling even more into the graveyard. Three woe striders there from Matt Nass. He'd love to get one of those out, but been struggling with mana the whole game. And now gonna take Ooh, six damage unanswered. And we're gonna follow up with Kitty Cats. And that's just gonna be game here for Luis Scott Vargas on Jun Sacrifice. Yeah, we didn't even need it. That uh, Woe Strider was actually excellent just to be able to sack uh, Butcher here to be able to clear out the one blocker, get those six damage in there from attackers, and then finish him off with Colton Familiar. Very nice line there from LSV. Yeah, these ca <laughs> like I said, you got a cat, you got two ovens. Yeah, you're pretty much going to win the game if, uh, <laughs> if there's no way for Matt Ness to deal with it. But yeah, just getting super unlucky with the draws, not finding land. Could have been a completely different uh, uh, game, but uh, yeah, the cats mm -hmm. and the oven just getting it done here. Proving again how powerful and why they're so powerful. 
Exactly, and it is kind of awkward with each time these uh, Cauldron Familiars go to the graveyard, the Massacre Worm trigger is actually having LSV lose too, but with LSV having enough of a life total boost here, was able to mm -hmm. get the job done. All right, sideboard times. Leyland of the Void, <laughs> yes please. Now I'm really interested to see mostly how Matt now sideboards. With LSV, it's pretty obvious. You want to bring in Leyline. You want to bring in Rex Sages. You want to bring in Veraska. These are pretty obvious from his end. But I've seen Matt do things like this. Take out all of the God Pharaoh's gift stuff and just nice. hope to beat them as this mono black value deck um, that can draw a bunch of cards with Crypt Breakers, kill everything basically and just doesn't want to become super vulnerable to these reclamation sages and to mm -hmm. these ley line of the voids you can see he's deliberating over this ley line of the void you know what's going through his mind is he like okay you can deal with this so chances are if i have this in my opening hand it's just gonna get dealt with seems like yeah. that's it and Leyline is unbelievably good against Matt Nass. Against LSV, it's okay. It's good. Mm -hmm. It stops these Cauldron Familiar loops like we just saw. Yeah. But, you know, and it stops Woe Striders from coming back. But it doesn't stop, you know, Mayhem Devils um, just attacking you. Dreadhorde Butchers just attacking you. LSV's deck is really hard to sideboard against because, uh, like, what, like what Manny was saying, uh, Manny was saying in the booth, um... LSV is a Rakdos beatdown deck that is splashing for Collected Company and Lovestruck Beast. So just hitting the graveyard isn't enough. Yeah, that's true. There's so many powerful creatures in LSV's deck. I mean, even if a Dreadhorde Butcher gets going on turn two, like there's not much you can do to stop it. <laughs> it exactly. It's getting bigger and bigger every single time. And it's frustrating because, yeah, even if you do stop it with a Ravenous Chupacabra or something, it's like, oh, all right, take, fo take four, take five, you know? Yeah. It, it, it gets to be quite brutal. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> to one thoughts. player. To one player, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's taking away that collected company, so no fun for you when you have four mana, Luis. Mm -hmm. uh, so you start things off here with an oven. Ooh. Another thought is nice. Oh, Ooh. That'll be interesting to see what we play here. I think Lazarus Tap Reaver is not too bad. One unknown card for uh, Matt's side mm -hmm. of things. So let's wait till that hand gets a little more juicy and we'll start uh, stealing things from LSV's Ooh, hand. Maybe regretting it now, but I guess we do have a sick play here and get the old Rankle Master of the Prankles going here. Hell yes. <laughs> using the creatures, using yes. Phyrexian Tower, being able to cast Rankle on turn three will force a sacrifice as well just to get rid of this Priest of Forgotten Gods. Sorry, Lazatep Reaver, you're going to hit the graveyard. I have to say, this is one of if not my favorite card printed in the last like two mm. years i love yeah. the design of this card you feel like you have so many options and when you lose you're like i had to have done one of these triggers from rankle wrong right right yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, rankle's a great card i love it does so many options all the time you know, sometimes you want to go into the despair mode and take away all, um, you know, cards from your opponent. Sometimes you want to draw cards because you need something, but you don't want your opponent to draw into their powerful things. You have to think about so many different angles attack for, uh, from this powerful four drop. Ooh, that hand from LSV is not looking good at all. No, those are those draws were not friendly to LSV. So Rankle's now causing discards, life loss, and card draw. Pranks are afoot, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Right. All right, Decides there's another to kitty cat. and draw. I kind of like this, you know, you're still, you're, you're still looting through your library. I like yep, it because free, free you fire. have... Oh, yep, sorry. Uh, I like it because you have a Thoughtseize there, but... Uh, LSV's top decks are just so much more powerful when you take out the God Pharaoh's Gift stuff from Matt mm -hmm. Nass's deck that the most powerful card in both of their decks has to be Collected Company. So giving LSV more chances to draw that card seems really rough, but if you get to draw a card and then Thoughtseize, then you kind of take away that luck aspect a little bit. Yeah, for sure. As we'll see, a few... Cauldron Familiar escaped the graveyard. Oh, hello, hangout, <laughs> and there, you called it, Collected Company. Hello, call and collect. Do you accept these charges? No I bet he's kidding. asking. Oh, no, goodness me. So Man, that's that... going to be super good to fire off soon. 
I think that's that burrito luck he got from uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! I do, I do hope that wizards sent him his promised burritos. I'm sure they did, though. Oh, he did. You didn't see the the picture on Twitter? I yeah, didn't. he had five oh. open burritos, and he's what? like, "Yep, got him." <laughs> got him. <laughs> he might be saying that after this match against Matt Ness, as he has his collector company in hand. But let's see if it whiffs. Don't forget, Rankle Master Pranks is still chipping away at this life total, yep. drawing cards, forking the discards. So. You know, it's anyone's game still. And we can't specify enough. These two are good buddies. So at the end of the match, you know, if, if whatever happens, Matt's just going to be like, you had to draw the collective company, didn't you, Luis? And he's like, yep, had it. <laughs> <laughs> Never didn't have it, I think is what yeah. you mean to say. There's that now we're gonna say, that Oh, nice. <laughs> collected company finds the woe strider. Reclamation Sage targeting the oven. We hope that doesn't resolve. Uh, but Rana Chupacabra bang. is going to kill... <laughs> This little kitty cat, one way or another, with this oven sacrificing the cat and generating a food token. Yeah, it's like, why would you target that kitty cat? There were such better targets on the field. Oh, because Collective Company was on the stack, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now Luis is just clawing his way back in here. His draws haven't been super good, but uh, we do have that Woe Strider now to be able to scry to the top. It is going to die here to the Ravenous Chupacabra. No, uh, never mind. I take that back. Reclamation Sage is yep. going to get dead here. And that's a smart play because if you just block Chupacabra to mm -hmm. Wolf Strider, you're, you're trading the resources on the battlefield, but let's say LSV bricked on a draw step, which he did. Now, all of a sudden, he has something to do with his mana and you want to try to take that away from him. Yep. Rounds of three is Matt Ness. This game is going to be over super duper quick as Wolf Strider makes its way out of the graveyard, escapes, is able to sacrifice these cats, do the food thing, yep. there's a Crypt Breaker off the top. That's not going to be enough here for Matt Nass, I don't think, Corey. I don't think so either. And a nice little high level play there from LSV. Like the Woe Strider didn't die, but you know what? You have this extra mana. You might as well do something with it. You might as well put two counters on your Woe Strider mm -hmm. um, and use your graveyard as a resource. And yeah, there it is. There it is, the Godfair's Gift, not able to get the job done here from Matt Nass. He falls to his good friend, Luis Scott Vargas, on Jund Sacrifice. So a pretty clean victory there for Luis, Corey.